On today's show, we're talking about macro extension tubes. How close can you get? Good morning and welcome to Photo Joseph's Photo Moment, the first live three times a week show all about photography, video, live streaming, all things camera related here on YouTube at youtube.com slash photojoseph every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 9.30 a.m. Pacific. Thanks for tuning in live for those of you that are here live. If you're not watching this live, do try to tune in live sometime. It's a lot of fun because you can participate in the chat. You get to be a part of the whole live show thing. You type in at Photo Joseph and then I see it on there and I know you have a question for me, which incidentally, if you are watching live, and you want to get my attention, make sure you do that. We will answer questions at the end of the show. We'll break into a separate Q&A section for that. But for now, we're going to focus on the topic at hand, which is extension tubes. Now, I did a video on extension tubes a while ago. Um, I had this really cheap extension tubes from a company called Photodiox, which I bought a lot of their stuff. They're a you know, Chinese manufacturer. They make all kinds of cheap little accessories. And they worked out really well until one of them got locked on a lens and I couldn't get it off. And I almost cried because it was one of my favorite lenses. And finally, Ryan, bless him, managed to get it off. I don't know what he did. I probably don't want to know, but he got it off. And I haven't had an extension tube since then. And then somewhere along the way, I saw um, a video on YouTube about it. And I'm sorry, I don't remember whose video, but I saw a video on YouTube talking about some new ones and I thought I'd try them out. And I've got those here. And that's what I'm going to show you. So what the heck is an extension tube? An extension tube is a way to do cheap macro photography. You've all known, you all know what a macro lens is, right? A macro lens allows you to get really, really close to your subject for that you know, close-up flower, bug's eye type photography, that sort of thing. But macro lenses, dedicated macro lenses are expensive. You know, as any good lens is, it costs good money. It's the kind of thing that if you're doing it all the time, by all means, you should spend the money, you should go buy one. But if it's one of those like, ah, I just play with it every once in a while, you maybe you don't want to spend the four, five, six, seven hundred dollars or even more for a dedicated macro lens. Now, Caleb Pike on DSLR Shooters just did a video. It's so funny, I swear to God. It's like all of us YouTubers do the same thing at the same time. It's, that was not the plan. But he just did a video on three different ways to do close-ups. We're going to link to his video up here because it's really cool. He talks about macro tubes, but also some other methods. So I do want you to check that out. I'm talking just about macro tubes, and specifically, these macro tubes from a company called Makey. These ones I'm talking about because these macro tubes, so there's the old ones that I showed. See, it's, it's a dumb tube. There's no electronics on here. This is the new one. Check this out. It's got electronics. What does that mean? That means that you can actually retain all of your metadata, your autofocus, your aperture control, and so on through this adapter, just as if you were using your regular lens. So what, what does this actually do? There's no glass in this. Okay, this is, not, this, is, this is not an optic thing. This is just a spacer tube. All this does is it moves the lens farther away from the sensor, which allows you to focus more closely. Now, there's some limitations, and we're going to talk about those, but it allows you to focus more closely than that lens would otherwise allow. And the farther away you move the lens from the body, the closer you can focus, until you get to a point where you're actually too close. The, fo the closest focusing point, or any focusing point, could actually be inside of the lens. Uh, if you go, It's kind of funny. If you get the right combination on there, you can actually focus on the dust on the front of your lens. Crazy, right? Um, but that's what it does. It just puts space in there. So this little pack comes with two adapters here. We've already linked to this down below, so you can grab that. But this is two of them. There is, let's see, where's the numbers? There's a 10 millimeter and a 16 millimeter. So combined, this is 26 millimeters. I can take these apart and I can use just the 10 or just the 16. You can do it however you like. Again, the more distance you have between the lens and the camera, the closer you can get with that lens. Now, one of the things that I learned out of the little tiny instruction guide that came with this that I didn't know before, probably should have known this, but I didn't, is I d essentially you cannot use a lens that has a lower focal length than the number of millimeters spacing. So if this, this is a 16 millimeter spacer, I can not use a 16 millimeter or less lens. I will not be able to focus with it. I need to use something longer than 16. So if I combine these two to make 26, I cannot use my 15 millimeter lens here. And we're actually going to do that. I'm going to show you. We're going to try it just to kind of prove the point uh, that it doesn't actually work. But that's essentially all this does. It adds space between the lens and the sensor, allows you to focus more closely. And these little guys have the electronic contacts, so you retain autofocus, aperture control, and so on. Incidentally, why is aperture control important? Like the autofocus you may not use because at macro photography, you're probably going to go manual anyways. You're really, really careful, focus on the part you want. But without aperture control, you can't actually stop down the lens because the vast majority of these lenses are electronically, electronically controlled apertures. So if you don't have a physical ring with a physical dial, this 
15 mil lens. This one actually does have a physical dial, but it's one of the few. Most of them don't, so you can't stop down. And if you can't stop down, your depth of field is about this much when you get in there. So you really want to be able to stop down a little bit. So that's why these are so important. Incidentally, let's take a quick look at these things on Amazon where I got them, just so you can see the price of these. They are, this is really inexpensive. This is what I got. It's a $24 pack. Um, I didn't even realize when I bought it, they actually come in different colors. I wish I'd know, seen that before. A couple bucks more, you can get them in blue or red, which is kind of funky and cool. Um, I totally missed that when I bought them. I went, ooh, bye. And then I realized it later. But anyway, so I got the black ones. But definitely get the colored ones. That's kind of cool. Anyway, so let's uh, let's see how this actually works. I'm going to, I've got this camera hooked up, for which I totally forgot to put a new battery in, but it's, I think we're going to be okay. Um, I've got on here right now the 35 to 100 2.8 lens. So this is a telephoto zoom lens. This is not a close-up lens at all. And we're going to see, to start, how close I can get with this lens combination. So let's switch over to the view through the camera. I'm in manual focus so that I can control this, and I'm going to set the focus to the closest, closest position. And then I'm going to move these lovely little flowers into position until they're sharp. And I think that's that. So I'm going to call that close enough right there. And so there's our closest distance. So now you can see, here's the lens. There's the flowers. This is, this is 23, almost two feet, a little bit less than two feet. So that's our closest focusing distance at, oh, it wasn't even at 100. Let's actually go to 100 millimeter. Let's do that again. At 100 millimeter, I want to zoom all the way in. And it's a little bit farther. Even there we go. So it's 100 millimeters now. Now we're just a little bit farther away. We had to move that out a little bit. So we're now at 26, 26, call it 26 inches. Okay. So that's our closest focusing distance. This is clearly not a macro shot. Now let's just go full on. I'm going to take the two combine, two uh, extension tubes, put them together. So we're going to get the full 26 millimeter maximum capacity on this thing. Put this on there. All right, let's go back to that view and manual focus again. I'm going to rack this all the way down to closest focusing distance. And oh, which actually that reminds that just made me realize something. The other reason that you really want the tubes with the electronic contacts is like this lens, not only is the aperture drive by wire, so is the focus. So if you don't have the electronic contacts, you can't actually focus the lens. And as you saw by default, its default position is the farthest out focus. So you really do need these if you want to take advantage of getting as close as you possibly can and getting some depth of field with your lens. Just realize that. Okay, anyways, go back to this. So we are at the closest focusing distance. Now I'm going to move the flower into frame. Let's get that closer, closer. And there we go. That is our closest distance. Now, how far are we? Well, you can see it's right there. Now we're looking at, what is this? Eh, about five inches away, four to five inches away. I'm just going to hear a little top-down view. You can see just how close this is. It was like way out here before. So we are really, really close there. That's pretty cool. Okay, so there's the 35 to 100. I'm at 100 millimeter. It's wide open. Well, it's not wide open. It's almost wide open. And we can see our distance in there. So you might be thinking at this point, well, okay, why don't I just leave that on there all the time, right? Because if I leave it on there all the time, then I can always focus more closely. Not quite. See, what happens is when you put this on there, you lose the ability to focus really far away. So, you know, obviously you normally have an infinite focus place where it gets to a point and then everything beyond there is in focus. Watch what happens here. Let me go back to this. And I'm going to change the focus now to the farthest, farthest distance. Let's rack that thing over. And now I'm going to move this flower, move it out, move it out, move it out. And there. That, my friends, is the farthest away that I can focus. I cannot focus on anything farther than this. So this lens with this um, uh, combination of adapters on there is no longer useful as a normal lens. I cannot focus on anything farther than this. So I've got a very narrow range. So it's certainly not something you can leave on there all the time. It gives you that little range of focus, but it is way closer than what you had before. So now let's take a look at going a wide lens. I'm going to take this 15 mil. So this is the 15 mil Leica. And I am going to, let's start. I'm going to start by leaving it at my full 26. So as I said earlier, this shouldn't work. I've got 26 millimeter extension on a 15 mil lens. I should not be able to focus with this thing. Um, so let's take a look. Let's go take a look through the lens. Let's set it to its closest, 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 closest focusing distance here. And I am moving the flower into space, into place. And I am literally touching the front element of the lens and I cannot focus on it. So that isn't going to work here. Look, let me see here if I'm doing this overhead. Like I'm here doing this and I cannot focus on that. Okay, so that's not going to work. So let's now 
Let's take it down a notch. Let's go for, oops, I'll leave that piece on. I'm going to go for just the 10 mil because the 16 is over 15. So we'll go for the 10 and let's see what that gets me. I'm going to stop it down just a little bit. Let's switch back through here. Let's put this at its closest focusing distance. It's got quite a long focusing rack. There we go. And bring this flower in, bring it 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 in. It's, it's, it's almost there. You know, I'm going to take the lens shade off of this thing. There we go. There's our closest focusing point, And you can see just how <laughs> this. we are literally touching the glass there to be able to see that. Uh, so it works. And that is your maximum, pretty much your maximum threshold there. So now what happens if you go with putting one of these onto a macro lens? That's the next thing that I want to apply with. So let's start with, I've got a 30 mil, this is the 30 millimeter uh, macro. This is the Panasonic macro. This is not the Leica. The Leica is the 42 and a half. I figured I'd go with the less expensive one here. We'll put that on there. And let's put this at its closest focusing distance. Now, we're, again, no, no uh, extension tubes here. This is the native macro lens. And let's see how close this thing gets. Uh, it's, whoa, that is, that's an impressive lens. I kind of forgot how close this lens actually gets on its own. So we are basically as close, not even really in focus. There we go. That's better. We are pretty much as close as we were almost with that 15 mil. Something tells me that putting the extension tube on here is not going to give me much of an advantage. But hey, let's, uh, let's give it a try and see what happens. Why not? I'm going to go for, I'm going to do both. That seems a bit ridiculous. Let's just do the 16. I'll just put the 16 on there, put that guy on there, and let's see what we can get. You know what? Here's what I'm going to do even better. I'm going to go into full-on manual mode here, uh, handheld mode. I'm going to go into autofocus so we can see how the camera performs autofocusing with this silly little setup. So there's my flowers, camera into autofocus mode. And we've got the extension tube on there. And let's take a look at this. So let's get it nice and close. And yeah, and get in there. Get that. There we go. Press the shutter halfway. She focuses. Now, clearly, you really don't want to be handheld on here, but it works. It totally works. So the autofocus works in there as it should. You get the ability to get super, super close with any variety of lenses. Uh, you know, as long as you keep that millimeter spacing less than what the focal length of the lens is, you should be good. And again, your restriction is that you cannot focus beyond a certain point. Your focus range is no longer from something to infinity. It's from something to something plus. It's just a little bit more. So that's it. So that's it. That's extension tubes for 20, what did I say? $24 or 26, seven, if you want to do for the funky colored ones. Um, pretty darn good deal. Now these are, of course, four, let's take a look at this again. These are four micro four thirds. You'll have to dig around a little bit and see if there are ones for other manufacturers, but this is specifically for the Micro Four Thirds format. I'm sure they make these for other lenses as well. Um, I'm sure you could find that if you just click the link that I have down below so you know the brand name and then you can follow through and uh, from there search around for the ones for your manufacturer. And that's all there is to it. So I hope that was interesting. hope that was fun. hope that was a, a learning experience for you. And uh, we're going to jump into the Q&A next. So stick around. We'll be right back for our Q&A section. We'll see what people have had to say and ask about what we just saw.